Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there Astro Ventures, welcome back. If you're new to this Astrophotography channel, my name is George and this is the Astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Sky Getter Pro or the Star Adventurer. Now you'll see I'm in uh, my bright white t-shirt here. Um, the reason being is, is I am on my annual Bortle One Southern Utah Astrophotography trip and the temperatures down here in uh, July are typically well above 100 degrees and wearing white really <laughs> helps to keep you cool under the sweltering heat. So uh, with that said, um, I'll be doing a series of videos for this trip and our first target is going to be the Dumbbell Nebula. Now the Dumbbell Nebula I have shot before and we actually have a video on the Dumbbell Nebula and shooting that underneath a nearly full moon because it, it, it's that bright of a target. Now, the reason I'm shooting it tonight is because, as I said, Bortle One Skies, it doesn't get any better than this. And I really want to see, um, with the addition of these really dark skies, how much more I can get to pop out of the Dumbbell Nebula and see if there's, you know, other things that I'm missing, uh, you know, under lesser skies. And then uh, I'll take you over to the computer and we'll do a edit on the Dumbbell Nebula because it is a great beginner target for learning to do your editing because with a lot of the nebulas, particularly with Hydrogen Alpha, it can get really frustrating when you're trying to learn it and figure it out. But the Dumbbell having such contrast and popping against the background of the night sky it's a really good simple target to kind of cut your teeth on with that said though um, I'll be shooting on a crop sensor uh, Nikon D500 and I will have that paired with a Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter generation 2 lens and with that um, the dumbbell nebula is an incredibly tiny tiny little target and normally it's not the kind of target I would go after, but because it has such contrast against the background of the night sky, it crops down really well without falling apart because it's so clearly defined with that contrast. And so the, the one big drawback though, if you decide to go after the dumbbell, is because of it being so tiny, you're not gonna find it on your own I mean, if I'm betting, you're not going to find it on your own. You really will need to use uh, either an ASI Air or, and I apologize, I can't remember the name of the, uh, the website, but uh, we covered it before, a website where you're able to upload pictures off the back of your camera and it will help you to plate solve. So either using the website or using an ASI Air, you're really going to have to plate solve and find your way to the target because it's just too small. When you factor in 600 millimeters paired with a crop sensor, that's putting, you know, on my setup at about 900 millimeters. And if you're on a Canon, uh, because of the 1.6 crop factor, it's gonna zoom in a little bit more. And with such a tiny target and so much zoom, you're just not gonna find it. So, uh, I'll join you over at the computer. We'll do an edit on the Dumbbell Nebula, and I hope you'll see what I mean. It's a great beginner target for editing. Okay, Astro Ventures, here we go. So, this is the image from Deep Sky Stacker. You can see it's pretty dark. And first thing I'm gonna do is do a quick little brighten on this. Bring the exposure up. Now we can see uh, where this is at. There we go, and we'll go ahead and open this and send it over. Uh, while this is coming over into Photoshop, I did that quick little brightening to see where the target is at, and the 
uh, shooting parameters. I was at an ISO of 1600. I was shooting at uh, one minute exposures with an aperture of 6.3. And I was around 500 millimeters on my camera, which is a D500 crop sensor. Now, the reason for the one minute exposures, shooting at such a long focal length with a crop sensor, that 500 millimeters, was about 750 millimeters functionally and you know you don't want your um, your exposure to go very long because then you end up getting stretched stars so here we go I'm going to duplicate the image because I want to leave the original in case anything gets screwed up I'm going to hit control M do a quick arc sine 10 stretch and there we go and see the target there now let's go in and do one more uh, another arc sign stretch let's take a look at what that looks like and okay I'm not exactly fond of that it's stretching it more than I want to the reason being is because I'm going to take this uh, image into Starnet to remove the stars so that when I do the editing of the nebula I'm just editing the nebula otherwise the stars are being affected they're growing bloating and uh, you know not helping out the image so I'm going to go control Z back up on that last one and I'm going to go ahead and save this now as a TIFF file for the Starnet program. So we're going to go, let's see here, to TIFF. And I'm going to name this Dumbbell 2. There we go, Dumbbell 2. I apologize for the echo. It comes off of the, uh, <laughs> the screen of my computer as I'm working here. Okay, there we go. And let's see, dumbbell two, discard layers and save a copy. I don't need the extra layers to make it any bigger. Okay, and now I'm going to go to my Starnet version two, and we'll bring that in and get this going. Okay, let me back up. Let's see here. Forgot to bring the image with me. So we'll go over here, open this in a new window. Let's grab our our uh, dumbbell two. Let's see here, dumbbell two TIFF. Control C. Come back over here to the star net. I'm going to paste it in here. Control V. Okay, there's dumbbell two. Now we're going to go down here to the actual application. Double click and open it. I'm going to browse to the Dumbbell 2. There we go. Now, this one is going to be the original that had stars. The second, the, the output is going to be without stars. So I'm going to label this No Stars. And over here on this finer tiles, uh, this does a little bit more of a precise job. The uh, information from Starnet is that it doesn't do much of an improvement. I, I personally think it does quite a bit. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. It does slow down the process and we'll go ahead and let this start running. And there you have it. Now this is a very slow process that's running. and. Eventually, you'll see, there we go, the counter has started. Uh, it'll process all of this, and in the end, it will say done just below, and it will generate the uh, image back to the Starnet file where we initially put Dumbbell 2. And uh, so at this point, I'll go ahead and pause this until the uh, processing gets done and then rejoin you. Okay, while we see the uh, last 3% here finish up, uh, one of the things I want to mention is the camera that I used for this was the D500, Nikon D500. This is a crop sensor camera and it is not modified in any way. Now, um, why it is that I'm using the Starnet? And this is really a game changer for your photography uh, whenever you're, uh, you know, doing your edit. And the reason being is, is because as you're doing your edit on, in this case, the Dumbbell Nebula, I want to enhance and bring out the Nebula. 
if I leave the stars in there, then what ends up happening is, is I'm messing with the stars. And, what in, and, and ultimately, it causes them to get brighter and bigger and more distracting. And eventually, I end up with so many stars that it really uh, kind of becomes noise in the image. And myself personally, I like to minimize the stars and how much they're playing into the image. So here you can see we're done. I will go ahead and close this. And then over here in Starnet, I've got Starnet, uh, excuse me, I've got Dumbbell 2, no stars. So we're going to take this, whoops, I'm going to take this, right click on it, and copy. Actually, I'm just going to control C. And I'm going to go back to. Let's see, Goblin Valley, the 19th, Dumbbell, place this in here. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to open this up in Photoshop. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, you can see all of the stars are out of the image. I'm going to go ahead and open this. And I'm going to go ahead and start to edit this. So I'm going to go Control J to duplicate because I never want to mess with my first layer. And as a general rule, as I am editing my images, I always like to um, do some edits. And then once I get to a point that I like it and I'm ready to try something different. Uh, so initially here, I'm editing by using curves with the arc side. When I decide to start doing some editing with levels, I'll do that on a new layer, specifically for the reason of if it doesn't go well, I can just delete it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's take a look. I'm going to go Control M, and you can see here's my colors. They're quite the spike. I want to stretch this some more, so I'm going to close that out. Control, oops, excuse me. I hit Control L for levels. I want to Control M for curves. Go back in, do another arc sign curve. Okay, there we go. We've stretched this out. Okay, now, uh, one of the things is, I'm going to zoom in here. You can see there are some particles left over, some artifacts that are in here from Starnet. So let's clean those up real quick. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go over to the Spot Healing Brush tool. Uh, letter J is the shortcut. Open this up a bit. Make sure that the brush is hardness at full softness, zero hardness. And let's see here. We're going to do a quick cleanup, get rid of these. Let's see here. There we go. Let's see, just bounce around. Get these cleaned up. I'm not going to worry about this over here on the edge because ultimately, when I crop down, because as I had said earlier, my image kind of walked to the lower right, I'm not going to end up using that anyway. So let's see here. Over. And then the next thing I'm going to do is get in here and after I do this cleanup, I'm going to go ahead and uh, align my, my colors. Take care of some of these little small ones that are right close to the nebula. Okay, there we go. Let's go Control L for levels. Got this stretched out. Let's go ahead and do some lining. 
Okay, so there's the red, that's what it looks like. And take a look, there's the green, you see the green is more to the right. There's the blue, so it looks like blue and red pretty close to lined up. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the red over just a tick. Let's see here. Now I'm going to start bringing this green over. Let's see here. There's the red. And I always use the red as the reference point. So anytime I'm going to one uh, green or blue, I'm going to look at the red first. See exactly where it is. And then adjust the others. And you stretch this blue a little bit. Hitting enter and then bringing it back up. There's the red, there's the green, there's the blue. Again, stretch this a little bit more. Hit enter. Okay, control L, bring up my levels again. So there's the red, there's the green, there's the blue. Okay. I like that here. All right, so what I'm going to do now is because I just got done messing with the uh, the levels there, I'm going to go ahead and do another arc sign stretch. So I'm going to go Control J so that if this uh, stretch doesn't turn out like I want, and this would be Control M, if it doesn't turn out like I want, I can always just throw it away. Here we go. Let's go arc sign stretch. Okay. There we go, and I'm going to take a look, oops, control L for my levels, and let's see here. If the red, the green, and the blue are still lined up well, green needs to come over a little bit. I could adjust them all at once, so let's see here. There's red, there's green, there's blue, so it looks like green and blue are already on top of each other. I'm going to stretch my red over just a tad. Okay, let's check it again. There's the red. There's the green. There's the blue. Okay, so I'm going to adjust this and bring these all over together. There we go. Stretch there. Click OK. Okay. Now I went a Z so I can back out on this a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take this and move over to the um, original image that I open. So with this one here, I'm going to go Control Shift Alt E. And what that'll do is it'll take all of the previous layers and make a new layer with all of those things put into it. Okay, now I'm going to go Control All or Control A for all, Control C to copy, and I'm going to come back over to my original, Control V, put that on there. Okay, now what I want to do is get this layer one down to just the stars. So stars, I decided to rename it. And then I'm gonna rename this one, this is my nebula. That's my nebula layer. Okay, so I'm gonna go stars, and I'm gonna go image, and then we're going to go, excuse me, uh, let me see here, image, Adjustments, I apologize. Let's see here. Image, there it is, a fly image. Okay, I always forget where that's at. Okay, so on layer, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna name this, neb I'm gonna go to the nebula layer, and then what I'm doing is I'm gonna tell it to subtract the nebula from that star layer. So let's see, I'm gonna go down to subtract. Okay, and then my offset, I want that as five. Uh, what that does is that helps to set the dark layer 
of this or how black the dark will be in that star layer. I'm going to click OK. The other settings I leave alone. Now let's shut that nebula off. There you go. You can see how dark this is. Now what I'm going to do, and I'll come back to nebula in a moment to finish editing that and bring the two together. Uh, what I'm going to do is go filter, camera raw, and within here, because I like minimal stars, I'm going to push the contrast, I'm going to uh, and, and by doing that, the darker stars are going to get darker, the brighter stars will get brighter. I'm going to push the white up a bit, I'm going to push the highlight up a bit. There we go. I'm going to take the blacks, push that a little bit darker. There we go, so that I have minimal stars going on because I just don't want them. Now, what I'll do sometimes is if I get a lot of colors showing up in the stars or chromatic aberration, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually just take my stars and kick them over to monochrome just to be a straight black and white because, again, personal preference, I'm not interested in the color of the stars. I want it for the nebula. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to click OK. There's my star layer, very minimal. Now let's go back over to my nebula, and we're gonna take a look here on my nebula. Now, I'm gonna set this to screen, and there's where it brings through the stars. So, I still have to finish working on this nebula layer, but right now I'm just checking my stars real quick. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to like that there. Okay, so I'm going to take the nebula back off of um, screen, put it back to normal, and I'm going to go ahead and go Control J, leaving this original nebula as my starting point in, in case this all goes to crud. So here we are, we are on the nebula copy. I'm going to go into my camera raw. And with this, I'm going to darken my blacks. There we go. There we go. We got rid of a lot of that modeling in there. Now I'm going to push some vibrance up. There we go. I'm going to push some saturation up here. There we go. Now this is working so beautifully because I shot this from Bortle 1 down there in, in southern Utah and so I don't have a lot of other things that I'm having to compete with. Uh, you can see there is some modeling in here but once I go to screen um, that'll disappear. The other thing is, is I could actually run uh, uh, noise reduction on it and we'll do that as well just to see uh, what that will do. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my color mixer and I've got this reddish pink in here and I've got the blue green in here. And again, I'm going to make it the way I want it. So I'm going to push a bit of saturation specifically in the red channel. I'm going to push the purple. Um, let's see here. I need to go to hue. I'm going to push the purple. Uh, over to the red just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to go into this blue green. I'm going to jump and grab the aqua channel, strengthen that a bit. There we go. I'm liking the way that's coming out. There we go. Now, uh, there is some additional modeling that's in there, uh, some noise. I'm going to go Control J. I'm going to go back to this first nebula copy. And this will be my, uh, let's see, no noise reduction and then on this one nebula copy 2 this is going to be let's see here noise reduction there we go okay now I'm going to come up here to filter I'm going to go to RC Astro and I'm going to run the Noise Exterminator. Uh, noise Exterminator is a great program. I found uh, Detail 31 and Denoise of 75% works well for me. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. I am using this as a trial right now. Uh, at the end of the trial, I can say I will be purchasing and I have been very happy. One, it does a really good job. And two, uh, I've also found that it runs pretty quick. 
if you want to speed up this process, one of the things that I would suggest, which I probably should have done with this, is go into the crop. So go into crop, crop it down to what you want, because I already know I'm going to be cropping down to a much smaller area because this is such a smaller target. And then um, go up here and click on the delete pixels checkbox that would be up here at the top and it will de it will get the image smaller and then your uh, noise reduction process will run much quicker because right now it's running this process over the entire image that I'm not going to be using so I would have been smarter to crop down to the working area that I'm going to keep and then run it and it would run uh, much faster but for right now, we'll let this go. One of the uh, things that I did see here, because I've shot the Dumbbell Nebula before, is looking in closely, and I probably should have had this bigger, but inside of the Dumbbell, I have a lot of um, reddish pinkish strings of color going through the Dumbbell Nebula that I have never picked up before. And I really think that has to do with the, uh, the Borda One Sky and allowing me to be able to pick up those you know light photons that uh, normally kind of got wiped out and washed out by uh, you know less than border one uh, sky conditions and if you are ever thinking about uh, heading out to uh, you know have an astrophotography trip somewhere I, I can't recommend enough uh, heading out here to uh, Utah. I'm actually a transplant from Detroit, but um, Utah the people are really kind. They're 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 good people out here. It's a safe place to be, and you know when you're going out into the middle of the night, uh, you know it, it's good to be in a safe place. Additionally, you have outstanding, uh, outstanding you know skies down in that Goblin Valley Canyonlands uh, Dead Horse. State Park uh, area. Okay, so there's the noise reduction from, uh, let's see here, RC Astro uh, Noise Exterminator. And then let's take a look at prior to the noise reduction. It didn't have to do a whole lot, and what I could probably do, uh, and, and I'm not going to worry about it because when I bring in the stars, this really won't show. But if this was bugging you, what you could always do, and, and we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, now let's see here. Yeah. So what you could do is you could go stamp, okay, which is the letter S. And then you could come up here to mode, and you could click darken. And then what you can do is press Alt to take your sample from this area. And then in this area, and I don't know how well it's showing up on the screen, I've got this light colored modeling that's showing up in here. What you could start to do is paint over this. And because up here at the top it's set to darken, it's going to clone in here the darker areas and get rid of that modeling. Now, the thing I have to be careful about is as I was doing that, I could see that it was taking away some of the Dumbbell Nebula there. So I don't want to get that feathering too close. That starts to mess with it. Do it over here. There we go. Yeah, that's working well. And I know some people will, will say, you know, but... Um, the thing is, is that you know the sky is not actually that dark, and, and that's that's true. But the thing is, you know what? <laughs> to each their own. You make the picture you want, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm darkening this up because I really want to make the uh, the nebula pop. All right, there we go. So I've cleaned that up basically in the area that I'm looking to, there we go, yeah, in the area that I'm looking to uh, crop down to. So I'm going to click the eye on the no noise because we're not using that one anymore. I'm going to go to the noise reduction one where I've done the cleanup. I'm going to click this on to screen. And what the heck happened here? Let's see. Why? 
Okay, let's see here. There's the noise reduction. Let's see here. We come in here to screen. And why am I having this issue? <laughs> I know why. Okay, the reason I left this in the video is for you to see. Okay, let me back this up. So I had this on, okay, and I went in here. Let me set this back to normal. Here's what I did. I'm going to show you. So I had this on, and I turned this one off so that I could show it down to you, and I set the top layer to screen, as you see, and I had all this noise show up. Reason being is because I still have this other nebula layer. There we go. We shut that off. Okay. Now, there we go. So I have my stars much more reduced. I'm going to go ahead and crop this down to what I want. Let's see here. And again, it's personal preference on the stars that you want. Okay, there we go. And so there it is. There is the Dumbbell Nebula. I would probably go into this and play with it a little bit more in the uh, camera raw. Darken up the center a little bit because it's a little bit bright. Oh heck, let's just do it. Okay, so we're going to go in here. I'm going to duplicate Control J. Um, and I got to take the screen off, set it to normal, and let's go into the camera raw. And then what I'm going to do is press the letter K, and this will allow me to do a very localized adjustment. I'm going to slide down here to highlights, knock this down a little bit. There we go. And paint over this just a little bit. There we go. And okay. There we go. That darkened up that center a little bit. And now I can decide do I like it? Do I not like it? I think I do like it. Okay, so there we go. So what I need to do is turn the eyeball off on this layer because it has the brighter center and set this layer noise reduction copy to screen there we go I like that that looks really good I'm happy with that and uh, there you have it so again as far as the stars I really recommend using the star net um, if the stars have just too much color that's distracting don't hesitate to make it mono you know it's your image some people like more stars some people like less but there you have it um, all I can say in closing for this part of the video is, gosh, you got to love shooting in a, a Bortle 1 uh, night sky. Okay, well, there you have it. That was an edit of the Dumbbell Nebula. And like I said, it, it's, a, it's a great beginner target to uh, cut your teeth on with learning how to edit. And it has some amazing pop against the background in the night sky and on this particular image um, and I don't know how well it comes through on, on YouTube but previously in shooting it I, I, I found uh, the red along the outer edge but I was able to find some veining of color to the center of it and I, I don't know how well it shows up on the screen for you but the reason why I, I was able to find that is again because of these uh, border one night skies. So if you ever get the chance to uh, head out here to southern Utah, um, you know, around the area of Canyonlands, Goblin Valley, uh, Dead Horse State Park, uh, this is all absolutely incredible dark sky in virtually every direction. And you don't have to be in one of those parks. Uh, just anywhere in this part of southern Utah. The skies are unbelievable. So um, I would love to see you over at our Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR, where you'll find a lot of other people that are using sky guiders or star adventurers. A lot of great like-minded people. And finally, if you like this video and what we're doing here, consider liking, subscribing, ringing the bell so that you're notified of our videos. And consider uh, sharing out our video, help us grow the channel. Until next time, from Beautiful, border, border one, southern Utah. I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights. And now I'm going to get back to doing some astrophotography.